Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community and podcast connecting people with the products, the lessons and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me today, as always, is my good friend, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? It is going splendidly. It's uh, it's a rainy, gross day outside. It's cold and that's the best kind of day to stay inside and get some work done. What about you? Anything new in the life of Kyle? You know, uh, actually, there's one thing. We we launched um, free trials for Docket WP last week. So oh. we got a bunch of people now that are able to hop in there and start a free trial and not have to pay for the software before they get a chance to use it. Of course, we had a good return policy anyways, but I know it's, uh, it's better if you can test it out before you have to buy it. So if anybody's interested, you can go to docketwp.com and start a free trial today that will last seven days. And then you can make a decision after that. So that's Whoa. what's new in my world. That's pretty cool. I would uh, I would highly suggest people take a look if you haven't yet. Um, I mean, I'm I'm a pen and paper kind of notes guy, but I've definitely seen the uh, the use in Doc WP. So, well, I, take it from I somebody that doesn't that. use those things. It's pretty cool. <laughs> well, if we can crack you, that will be a, a good case study right there. That's true. But yeah. Other than that, just uh, plugging away, working on client work. We uh, we hit three thousand members in the group uh this this week which is pretty awesome uh i guess we started this just a little over two years ago it's probably about two years and a month now and obviously like as we said in in all these posts kind of leading up to this it's never really been about like how many users can we get in the group or i mean if you watched how many we deny access into the group uh mm -hmm. you would know that we're not just trying to grow it just for the sake of growing it but it's still cool to hit you know a big round number milestone uh and to kind of maintain a nice quality of of you know interaction and all that with three thousand people i think it's pretty awesome i'm excited for uh thursday us doing our big giveaway yeah that's gonna be a blast and you're right like Big groups are cool and all, but I think that growing too fast, too quick is uh, a conversation that we had, you know, kind of when we started growing. And yeah, like we want to keep that community as uh, as like close knit where everybody kind of knows each other. And that's really hard to do with a massive community. So right. we do take precautions and care to uh, to ensure the right people are, are in there and they're, they're all helpful and they're all a bunch Actually, of sweethearts. <laughs> it was funny as, as we were like, you know, within 10 members or so last week, I had to do my, my routine monthly, let's check copyscape and see who's stealing content from me. And I ended up having to kick out like four people in the group in one day. And I was just like, man, what a bummer. Uh, but another thing that kind of, kind of hit me and put this into perspective, I, I guess I will say if, if you're out there listening to this podcast and you're not a part of the group, you can go to the adminbar.com forward slash group, and that will redirect you to our Facebook group. I'm always surprised. There's always people that join and say, I've been listening to the podcast uh, yeah. and they're not part of the group. So uh, definitely want to invite people. I don't think we do that very often, but I was thinking about this uh, when, when I went to high school, I went to a small Texas town uh, to school. Uh, and it is a small town, but there was only like 2,400 people in the town that I <laughs> kind of grew up in, you know, and there's more people than that now in the admin bar, which is, uh, which is nuts. Yeah. That's, uh, they that's, could that's see me now to think about, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So anyway, I think, uh, kicking off this, um, this episode is, uh, is next. So Kyle, you're, you're first this time. Yes. So uh, this is kind of a, this is a note to previous Kyle. Like if I could go back and make, write a letter to myself in podcast form uh, to myself. So not a, a, not a letter at ago. all. Yeah, it's, it's definitely not. Um, it, a cautionary tale that I would love to have gone back and tell myself. And, and for anybody that's been doing this for a long time, maybe this just serves as a good reminder, uh, because I think people who've been doing this long enough have figured this out. Uh, for people getting started out, this is definitely something that I wish I would have known when I started this. So uh, I'll kind of take you to, to where this kind of sparked, uh, you know, my mind going in this direction. I had a email from a customer, uh, a care plan customer, Hmm, earlier this week, late last week. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember anymore. Um, but he basically, he had been delinquent on care plan invoices for like two months. Um, 
And so it, we had gone back and forth a few times. He started sending me his credit card number, like in my email, but not providing all the details where I could actually enter it. Mm -hmm. And he's always real pushy. Um, so I, I ended up getting a little bit pushy back and just said, Hey, you know, here's these two invoices. They need to get taken care of. Um, if one of them goes more than 60 days late, I'm going to package up your website and send it to you and give you, you know, 15 days to get it put up somewhere else and I'm taking it down. So I was kind of just like last straw, this is done, you know? So he finally went and uh, paid both the invoices, but then sent me kind of a nasty email complaining uh, that my prices went up, which they didn't. It's the same thing he's been paying for over two years now, every month, uh, complaining that my prices went up. And uh, I guess I should preface this. He's, he's a care plan customer that never asks for anything. I, I mm -hmm. email him frequently. Like I email all my care plan customers, some like in, you know, group emails to everybody, like marketing emails, some just individual emails to them. He has never asked for anything. His website hasn't changed in two years. Um, anyway, so he wrote me back this email and said, you know, why am I charging him more? And he hasn't got a single customer from his website in the two years he's had it. Mm. Um, so why should he keep paying me? Which fair enough, you know, why would you pay for something um, that you're not seeing a return on? I, I didn't like how he blamed me for it. And that's kind of what we're going to go into. Um, mm. But fair enough, right? If he's not seeing a return on the website, um, it's not worth spending money on. So I, I will say, I'm not going to give out his website in here. Um, no, that's probably not a smart move, but I will say when we were setting up the website, uh, he's a very analytical, smart, uh, he's a scientist. Okay. Um, and what he, his job that he does is very specialized. He has a full-time job and he's basically doing that same job, but on the side for himself. And that's what this website's for. Um, but when we were doing all the copy, I, I couldn't write copy for this website. I don't understand what he does. Uh, so he wrote all the copy and reading it then and going back and reading it now, couldn't tell you what he does at all. <laughs> There's a lot of words and a lot of things about stuff, but I, I literally have no idea what so this guy So is it just poorly written or is it uh, just like over complex? It's poorly written. Um it's it's like a lot of buzzwords is what it feels like to me. Okay, um, so like industry words or yeah, and so I imagine if he was talking to one his one of his coworkers that does the same job he does, um, and and read all this stuff out, already having the context and knowing what they do for a living, uh, this would probably make sense to them. But as like somebody visiting this website. Um, maybe I just don't get it. Somebody else does. I'm guessing by the amount of customers he's getting from his website, nobody gets it. Um, but, um, well, who's yeah. the, uh, who's the target for this website though? Like, is it just the every everyday average Joe or is it other people in that industry? Cause I mean, I've, I, I recently did one, uh, that dealt with millimeter wave, uh, electronics and things that look way above my head, like quantum computing type of stuff. And of course their websites covered with like very technical jargon, but at the same time, they're business to business. Like the average Joe doesn't ever need to, to see that site. So, I mean, in that case, I would say that it's okay. Yeah. I would say he's probably targeting like manufacturing companies would be my guess. Okay. So people that um, like kind of probably are in the know. Maybe, maybe. Um, but I couldn't tell you that for certain. Right. My guess is this is, this is poorly done. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, it looks pretty, but it's probably not super useful. So anyways, he's complaining that he's not gotten, um, you know, any kind of customers off of his website. And so this is kind of my cautionary tale and what I would like to go back and say to my my former self is it's really, really, really important to have conversations with prospects um, about what their goals are with their website, um, you know, uh, what their plans are for promoting their website. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing I kind of went back and explained to him in an email and, and I, I like analogies. So I use this analogy and this is probably what I will use uh, hopefully refined, but in the future is Basically, you, he hired me to build him a location for his business, right? Just like a contractor, like a 
location, except the location happens to be online. Digital, okay? right. Yeah, it's an online location for his business. But it's very similar to what you would go through if you were building a physical location for the business. So we talked about what would go in the location, what's the structure of the location, um, all these kinds of things. And of course, I made sure to put a driveway in so people that come by can actually get into the business, right? Uh, so like that fundamental on-page SEO stuff, like the headings and all that stuff, metadata is fine. Um, but I didn't, I, I didn't go into him with, you know, let's, let's really figure out who your target audience is and how can we cater copy to them and uh, what are we going to do to drive traffic to the website? Just like a builder probably wouldn't, you know, if he builds you a beautiful, nice building that's great for your customers, he's not going to actually get people to drive to the building and use it, right? right. Now we do, most of us do offer that as a service. So we do have some marketing services uh, that we also provide, but that's not really what this website was. It was to build him a website, right? And so I think having that conversation with people uh, very early in the process before you agree to do anything is important, right? Because I did exactly what the brief for this project was. He wanted a website built. I built a website. Um, but he was he happy with the away. website when right. it was built, but he's not happy with the results from it. But we didn't have a deep enough conversation about like, what are, what is the goal of this website? How are people going to find it? And I, what I his expectations were. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I do have customers that say, you know, SEO is not important to me. I need this website because I'm going to tell people to go visit it. You know, it's like a legitimacy thing. I'm going to put it, you know, in our advertisements or on our business cards or whatever in our email signature, whatever it may be, but getting organic traffic to it isn't necessarily important to them. I have no idea if it's important to this guy or not because I didn't have those conversations with them. Right. You know, so I think, uh, I followed the brief that I understood, which was to build this website. Um, he was happy with that, but then his expectations were that because we built it, they will come. Right. And so ultimately that's, you know, that's definitely my fault for not having that conversation. Um, uh, I honestly can't expect everyone to understand how digital marketing works and websites and all this, you know, so it's definitely my place to have that conversation with people. And I think over the years I've, I've learned to do that better. Uh, but now because of this situation, I feel like that has to be written into my process. Like those questions have to be asked and addressed and, you know, explain to them, well, if, if you're not going to do SEO and if you're not going to do, uh, pay-per-click ads and you're not going to write a bunch of copy and you're not going to do social media campaigns like you know you'll have a big nice fancy building that no one will know exists right you know? right so i you think know, that that building analogy makes sense i think something that people could like kind of um you know understand uh, but I guess, unlike a builder, we're actually able to also do that marketing piece along with it. But it, it really is. There's, those are two separate things. I'm sure there's people in our community that uh, build websites and don't offer marketing services. You know, they're two completely different things. Yeah, it's like uh, being a builder and a taxi service. Right. Yeah. You know, you uh, you mentioned that, but my uh, one of my clients, they during the onboarding process and, and discussing their goals and everything and go figure this is the, uh, the same one that I brought up earlier where it's full of technical jargon. And, you know, they also said, we don't want any SEO. Um, and I, you know, I, I kind of put a little bit of pressure on him. Like why? Because I didn't want a situation like that to, uh, to spring up. And because I wanted to, uh, to have them know full well what the implications uh, would be with that like basically no one will know you're 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 there unless you drive them yourself you know that that type right. of conversation because in the past I have had people that said no I don't want SEO and I've asked them are you sure like these are the the repercussions etc cetera, etc cetera. and they said no it's fine it's fine everything's fine and then six months later they'll get in contact with me and they'll be like hey nobody's on our site and if you Google, you know, some, some keywords, it's not showing up in the results. And I'm like, well, that's because we didn't do SEO. Like if you Google your, um, your brand name, you guys pop right up. But 
like we didn't right. do any of SEO. So nobody like it, it's just not functioning. And that one ended up like they said, okay, let's like rework and replan and, and we'll go back and, and, uh, and, you know, revisit that issue. But I think SEO in general, a lot of people either really have no clue as to what it really is or what it means as far as like what it means for them, like the things that they have to continue to do, like if it's it's generating blog posts or, you know, any sort of uh, outbound marketing or, you know, whatever it be. Um, I think there's that. And I also think that with SEO in particular, it's such a nebulous thing that I think people are a bit wary about SEO and trusting yeah. people when whenever SEO like exits a mouth every once in a while you see a, a, a client like glaze over and they're just like nope I'm not falling for that one again right because it's I mean it's it's pretty nebulous even for the people that are doing SEO you know <laughs> yeah. like we don't have like a very targeted like a b c d e like these are not the steps that you do to make perfect SEO it's it really depends. It's regional. It's like, you know, the, the locality. It's, strategy. it's not, it's not a product. It's a strategy, you know? Exactly. And I think that, uh, that wrapping that, uh, conversation in as well is, is pretty needed just because man, SEO can be a behemoth, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I think this kind of goes back to something that I've also been trying to work on and, and I've redone like the way I'm, uh, working with prospects and the questions I'm asking them through my form and through emails and stuff is to break down what it means when you say I need to have a website built. Cause that's what mm -hmm. most people in general terms, can you build me a website? Can you make me a website? Can you design me a website? I need to have a website. Those are kind of like the words they use. Right. Right. And but then what, that's when you start asking why. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, but what does that mean? Because what people are going to envision as a website is actually a lot of different disciplines like put in there. So you have uh, content writing, right? So that's, I mean, that's something you're going to have to have copy on your website. Like they're mm -hmm. probably not thinking about that as necessarily its own standalone thing, but are they writing copy? Are we writing copy? Are we hiring somebody else to write copy? Uh, there's the actual design part of it. Like yep. I'm going to create a custom design for you. So there's the design side and then there's the actual development side. I'm going to take this design, even if you kind of design in the browser, we've kind of mixed those things together with page builders. Um, but the development is different than the design and it's, it's a different process you go through and it's different uh, goals within that. So the design and development is different. Uh, the SEO, or let's just say SEO is in there with marketing. Like mm -hmm. how are you going to then get use out of this website? Are you printing the website address on stuff? Are you hoping for organic traffic? Are you doing social media campaigns? Are you doing PPC? Like that's also very important to a website being useful at all. Um, and then like the, the, um, the ongoing, you know, continued involvement in the website. So the security and maintenance and all the care plan type things that go in, in with it. And even if it wasn't a WordPress website where we're not like talking about updating plugins, but you, you, you kind of constantly have to be adapting your website, um, or you should be. So I think that's a separate conversation too. So it's almost like, okay, well, when I start talking to people, especially people that have never had a website built before or, or new to this, like, okay, well, I need to make them understand first that it's not a website. Isn't just a one thing. It's not like here, have a website, right? And you, like hand it to them. It's like, it's just a word we give to a huge collection of things we do. You know what I mean? So I think communicating that better uh, would be very important. And obviously this, I mean, going back, we've wandered a little ways, but going back to what I would have told myself before I walked into that meeting uh, at a Starbucks here in, in Granbury, uh, is like, okay, let's talk about what are his goals with this? How is, how is he going to look back at this website and say, man, I'm glad I did that. Um, in, and kind of breaking down, like, what is his marketing plan? Because if there's not a marketing plan, but you're expecting to get customers out of your website, it's just never going to work. Uh, so definitely have those conversations. This was kind of in a period where I was taking on whatever work somebody was willing to pay me for. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you know, he asked for a website. I said, yes, I'll build you a website. And there wasn't a whole lot of like, does he really need this? Is he going to be happy with what I provide? You know, so I imagine, 
imagine he's probably going to leave my care plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, He hasn't said that yet, but he's not going to spend more. um, And he's not going to get marketing out of a care plan. Um, So, you know, it's not really part of a care plan. Uh, So I don't really see how it makes sense to him unless he wants to start spending more money. And my guess is he already thinks he spent way too much. So we're kind of at an impasse at this point. You know, and it's funny to think too, like, now bear with me. Um, so if, if this guy was to approach you at, the, at, at, at that point in your career versus you at this point in your career, um, do you think that, so I'm, I'm wondering, you know, somebody, somebody approaches somebody and they're like, hey, I need a website. And they're like, sure, let's do it. And they build them a website and boom, done, right? Versus approaching somebody and saying, I need a website. And for them to come back and say, well, here are a bunch of questions. What is a website to you? What's your goal? Where's like, where is it going? Where's it going to be in two years? What kind of marketing are you going to be running? Are you going to be generating any, uh, any content? Um, do you have your own photography? Do you need a copywriter? All of these things could potentially scare that person away. Right. Because they're, yeah. they're coming to you and they're like, I just want a website. Like, I don't, what, what, what is all of this extra work? What does that mean? And, you know, I think we do go through that phase in, I mean, most of us at least have gone through that phase of picking up any, any work we possibly could just saying yes and doing it just to build a portfolio, just to get through that first year or two. But I do think that even if you do scare people off, it's probably a good thing. It's, it's similar to, uh, to like raising your prices, you know, like if you, if you were building 750 to, to $1,200 websites, you raise your prices, you're going to get fewer clients probably, but the ones that you do get will be paying for the ones that you're, you're, you missing quote lost or missing. Right. right. And in usually the experience is much, much better, like both for you and the client, because you can focus on them. You don't have a hundred things going on at once. You've got that one or two, three, four, however many jobs you personally can handle, but they're all paying fairly well. So like your level of stress goes down. You're able to, to, to talk to the the clients on like individual basis as, 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 as frequently as they need. Right. Um, so I think it's kind of like in the same vein of that where, yeah, you might be scaring people off that, quote, just want a website, but at the same time, are those going to be super great clients in the long run? Something to kind of balance. Probably not. And I think part of it goes into like, how do you, how do you bring all this up to them without scaring away? I think a lot of it's just client education. So Mm -hmm. like, Mr. Client, I'm excited. You want a website. Let's talk about everything. Do you understand everything that goes into it? Here are the things that we're going to need in place, you know? So even if you do scare them away and they go to the next guy, um, if the next guy doesn't ask those questions, they're going to be wondering like, well, what about all that stuff that we have to do? You know what I mean? Because they're going to be a little bit more knowledgeable and they're going to be at least like, obviously everyone realizes there's words on websites, but I think a lot of people come to us not thinking about, Oh, I'm going to have to have words on my website. You know what I mean? They just want like right. boom, website it's done. Um, so I think it, it will at least make them think about all of those things, you know? Yeah. And me personally, I want like as educated a client as I can get, if, if that's like them educating themselves beforehand, doing some, you know, the, the legwork and the research prior to contacting me, or after, as long as they're, they're like fairly well understood as far as this is what a website is. This is, you know, these are the basic building blocks. And I mean, they don't need to be developers. They don't need to know, um, like the fundamentals of design or anything, but just to have that, like that, that jumping off point and that it really helps the communication as well. Um, and oh boy, what book was that? Um, they ask you answer actually goes Mm -hmm. into that talking about how like there's a, there's been like that shift where like customers are way more educated nowadays. Um, you know, if you, if you go to, to build a pool or something in your backyard, they're going to do their research, uh, before they contact that pool company. Right. Right. That it, it's, it's pretty similar, but I think because the, uh, the internet is the internet and it's, it is pretty nebulous really. Um, like we are still in that group of, most of the people reaching out don't really know what goes into it. 
I think that given a couple of years, five years, however long it takes, like more people will be understanding. But currently, right now, it's it's kind of our jobs to make sure that even if they don't choose us to develop their website, if they leave after I quote them or if I have that that first discussion, if they leave and they hire somebody else because they're you know, they're not as expensive or they don't need like all the bells and whistles and my minimum, you know, prices for a website is just too high. That's cool. I want them to find another developer that is on, you know, that, that is charging a lower amount or whatever, but have that person educated. So at least the product that they get is closer to what they want. Absolutely. I, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up and, and get to your topic here. I will say I, I wrote a blog post a while back that I call the website buyer's guide. And it's basically this concept to try to inform customers what they're getting into and what they're going to need to know and what they're going to need to plan for. And one of the lines in the beginning of it is, uh, basically becoming informed reduces risk. Mm -hmm. So you're going to make better, smarter decisions for your business. The more informed you are period. Absolutely. Uh, so, I, I encourage them to be uh, educated. So that's my uh, my word uh, to myself back in the day. But uh, all right, so I, I rambled on long enough. That took up a, a long time here. So let's uh, <laughs> let's move on to your topic of the day. Um, mine, I think, is going to be like fairly short. So that worked out pretty well. Um, and it's kind of in the same vein. I made a note to myself the other day to uh, to bring this up and talk about it. And I had written. What's your threshold when bending your own rules for a client? And at what point are, are, you, are you starting to realize that they may not, might not be the greatest client? Um, so I will, I'm going to be asking you this question, and we're going to bounce this back and forth because I really don't have a, a story or anything. Um, the thing that, that did, you know, it, it got in my head because I do have, um, I have two care plan clients that they're paying for, you know, the, the ongoing SEO, they've got, you know, just like analytic reports every month. They've got the whole suite, basically. And these guys, they're over $1,000 a month. And towards the end of the year, due to the type of business that they're in, they don't have the cash flow that they do January, February, March, you know, the beginning of the year. And because of this, their invoices uh, probably come towards October um, they start becoming late and, you know, it'll, it'll be like maybe 40 days past due and then it'll be paid. And then the next one will be 60 days past due, but it still shows up. And the next one's 80 days past, but it still shows up. And I'm willing to bend for that mainly because we've been, working together for a solid amount of time, a couple of years now. I totally trust that they will. I understand the their cash flow in their business. Um, plus like, you know, having a couple grand every month that is recurring is definitely something that I want to hold on to. So I'm willing to bend there. And I think that that's, that's great for both the client and myself. But have you, Kyle, ever like had a client that started out great or started out fuzzy and then just devolved into something where you're like, oh no, this isn't, this isn't what we, uh, we signed up for. Yeah. I mean, I just got rid of, got rid of, I, I've been asking to get being gotten rid of for a while. Uh, I was let go from this client, mm -hmm. um, happily. Uh, I was pretty thrilled to be let go. Um, because yeah, they wanted me to do a lot of things that didn't seem to fit the right expectations, right? Mm -hmm. or, or what we had kind of agreed to. But as far as like bending for clients, I mean, it's such a, we, you know, both of our agencies are very small. It's just us. It's, it's not like we have any nameless, faceless clients that like, oh, I don't even remember these people and they keep sending me money. Like we know all these people. Very true. Uh, pretty well. Uh, so for me, it's, it's probably like a personal preference basis. Like, like if you've established some sort of like working relationship, friendship with a client, it's much easier yeah. to do. It, it sounds awful, but maybe because I like them. Mm -hmm. So here, here's a, a, a good, for instance, I have a good client that has been on a care plan since I was still working a full-time job. 
Um, so several years back now, I built their website when I was still working that full-time job. It was maybe the, I think it was the first website that I built, like as I'm a web designer now, like I built a couple, like oh, damn, I can help that's, you that's out. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's been a very long time, but as you can imagine, the website three, four years later has some issues. Uh, I'm still maintaining it. I was still keeping everything updated and all that. Uh, it, like just from an aesthetic point of view, it had some discrepancies and inconsistencies. Um, but the other day I was, I was doing some updates on it and you know, this one thing wasn't working anymore and that led me to something else and that led me to something else. I'm like, okay, this, this website's six or seven pages. I'm just going to rebuild this whole thing using the stack I use now and knowing what I know now. Um, it took me about two hours to knock the whole thing out. I mean, the layout was done. Uh, you know, all the colors and typography and everything were already there. Mm -hmm. I just had to rebuild it in Elementor because I wasn't using Elementor back then. Um, and like I said, it took me a couple hours. Uh, I vastly improved the way the website looked. Um, not vastly. I, I improved the way it looked. Um, I very much improved the way it performed. Um, right. and, and like it's, it's burden on my agency every time I have to go update things now is much less. Um, and part of it was I just the clients like really nice. They're not needy. Uh, they always pay their invoices on time. They rarely ask for much, uh, but when they do, I'm happy to do it. Uh, they're always very thankful when I do things. So mm -hmm. I didn't even ask. I just rebuilt the website and then I sent them a note. Hey, just to let you know, uh, in case you notice some things are different on the website, here's what happened. You know, some of this, you know, technology was out of date. So I just decided the best thing was, you know, if this was my website, I would want it completely redone instead of more band-aids put on it. So that's what I did. I just rebuilt the whole thing. I won't go into, you know, nitty gritty details with you, but I had to rebuild the whole thing to make it right. And I wanted to do that for y'all. And she was super appreciative of it. Super happy about it. It took me two hours. So it wasn't a huge drain on my time or anything, mm -hmm. but I probably wouldn't do that for every customer. Yeah, no, I hear you. That's, that's true. And I think, I think that like, just, just, Improving the quality of life for, you know, uh, like, you know, users that are visiting the website, like what you did, you rebuilt it, it loads faster, it's probably a little bit easier to navigate now, like, you know, sections make more sense, etc. Like just structural wise. Um, right. I mean, that's, that's a huge thing. And, you know, yeah, no, I, there's nothing I can say to that. <laughs> that's just like, that's, that's super kind. And I'm not sure like how many other people would do that. Because yeah, you're saving yourself some update time in the future, but again, they never really ask for anything. So like, why not just put that off? You know, like who knows? Yeah. I mean, I think about the client that I was talking about earlier from my, uh, my side of the podcast, like if he came to me and said, Hey, will you rebuild this because of X, Y, and Z? Hell no. I mean, if you want to pay me a few thousand dollars, right. sure, I'll rebuild it. But I sure as hell wouldn't go to that trouble for him. So it was very much a personal preference. I'm willing to do this for this customer, but not the other one. I also think like I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up because we are getting towards the end here. But I also think that um, that agencies tend to, well, they always grow, right? And I think Hopefully. that there's there's a possibility that you can outgrow clients just like clients may, might outgrow you. Um, where in the beginning, like in the beginning of my, my agency, um, I was, I started with branding, you know, and like print design and, and all of this stuff. And I had many recurring clients that, that would come back for like a business card design or a flyer. And Kyle, I know you also started with the, uh, with the, the world of print design, <clears throat> but the further we move into web design, you know, the more. The more tasks and daily things that we need to do for those clients and when somebody comes to me now with um a brochure like a trifold like a business card is is fairly usually pretty simple to lay out it doesn't take a ton of time or anything but trifolds those can take uh, quite a bit of time. I mean, yeah. you've got very limited space they're all like you know in in columns how does it go together what like I think for the uh, the amount of time and effort put into that print design, the same amount of time and effort put into say a new website, you're gonna get more out of that as an agency. So I think that, and I've I haven't necessarily neglected or fired or you know, 
what am I trying to say? I guess it's just that when, when I was focusing on print design, that's the type of work that I would get. And that's the type of work that, you know, was recurring. And then I, I slowly transitioned into to the world of web and I started getting more of those and slowly started positioning myself, my business, everything towards web. And those folks that were coming to me for small ads here and there or whatnot, I actually tried to find other people, other designers and partner them up and say like, look, like this isn't really something that I'm focusing on anymore. So here's, here's person X, Y, or Z. You can reach out to them. They do awesome work, but you know, outgrowing clients definitely happens. Yeah. But I mean, there are still clients that come to you for that kind of work that you will do it every time because you just enjoy working with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's interesting. Well, that, that was a, a good uh, mix of topics today. I feel like uh, things went well, which I don't always feel that way. So right. let me know if I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> But uh, is there anything else we didn't get to that you wanted to make sure we got to today before we wrap this up? I don't think so. Um, I'm super looking forward to Thursday. I am too. You know, we tried to do this podcast live into the group and it did not work. Facebook wouldn't connect. That's our entire plan for Thursday. Like that's the only plan I have is the way we tried to do it today that didn't work. So I'm going to need to do some testing before Thursday, but uh, this Thursday, the 22nd, we'll be doing our giveaway in the group. There's over $8,000, almost $9,000 worth of prizes uh, to be given away. We ended up having what around 550 or so people register. Mm -hmm. uh, so lots of, lots of people in there. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what everybody ends up with, but there's some really neat prizes. I think, 22 or 25 people will win um so there's still quite a few people that will get prizes but i'm excited about that and just giving away stuff to people in the group it should be fun so hopefully everyone will join us there and hopefully facebook live will cooperate heck yeah yeah we'll, we'll have to figure out a plan b if that uh if that doesn't connect yeah that just kind of hit me right now all right, guys. Well, if this group or show helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to like and subscribe to our channel, share our content, and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it greatly helps support the show. We will catch you all inside the group. Bye-bye.